You good to go? Hi, it's Happy Health Habits Happy Hour. Oh. <laughs> Carrie and I coined that yesterday. It's a happy hour in the middle of the day. Who knew? I'm having coffee and water, but you can have whatever you want. I'm having water with my water. And yeah. Oh, now I've got my Optivia Active, so happy hour. And I just had my lunch. I had my mac and cheese with tuna on it, my own little tuna casserole. So I love that. Anyway, so welcome to what day is it? The 29th of May. Um, remembering that it was women's, it is still Women's Health Month. It is actually Mental Health Month as well as, of course, Mom's Month. So there was a lot of stuff going on um, all around women. So hopefully you're taking care of yourself today. Um, Want to just screen share here real quick. And bring up where is okay now where is my you guys I thought I was all prepared here I had this all ready to go what happened okay there we go okay, so we thank start you with Kate if you wanted but... yeah thank you for being here today hold on just a second we have oh yeah because you've got to leave at twelve thirty right so what I want to do is um. Where is my screen share button? There we go. So just want to take a quick second here to thank you for loving yourself enough to be here. <laughs> and I, I, Kate's here for a reason. So I'm going to let, I'm going to keep this short, but um, remember, right? Why are you here? Start your breathing while you're here. We're going to regulate our nervous system. Remember why you're here. Put some loving on yourself. Breathe and relax. Remember your why, right? Remember your word for the year. Get focused on consistency or authenticity, whatever it is. And we're going to do some nervous system regulation while we listen to Kate because she's got to go here um, at 1230. I wanted her to come on today um, to talk about specifically when it comes to all of us in this habits of disease state, this messy state and trying to integrate and become whole, right? That's what our goal is to get all the habits of the health together. What happens is we end up in that drama triangle all the time and we're shifting down. We know about stop, challenge and choose, right? We know about the drama triangle. We know the empowerment triangle. Why do we have to keep going back down to ground zero? And, um, and why do we keep shifting down below the line? Why does that keep happening? And I've been talking to Kate and she's been doing a lot with, she's an emotional, she um, is an emotional freedom guide and she's worked with me and other people and herself intensively, lots and lots of training about this lizard brain. You guys remember this in your life book, the lizard brain, that amygdala, Amy, the evil Amy, that's always running the show. And she's working a lot with that. And I, she was sharing a story with me recently about what she had done with her cravings um, and her and on her journey and about controlling the amygdala, right? Getting off of that emotional roller coaster, again, from the life book, the emotional roller coaster. And, uh, and, and she's been working with herself to control that amygdala. And, um, and I was fascinated by what she was sharing. And I'm gonna have her just share her story here while she's got time. And share with you what she's done with her, you know, kind of addictions that she'd been been working on and emotional freedom that she's been experiencing. And I cannot wait to learn more. Uh, so share with us, Kate, um, what 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 you, you know, what's going on with you? What are your successes? I mean, you struggled with your healthy habits and your all all your life. So share with us. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. So my story is very long, but I'll give you the ultra abridged version. Um, I had been an unhealthy eater my whole life. I'd been overweight since I was very, very little. Like, I don't remember not being chubby. Um, but when I was about 18, my weight started like gaining exponentially. I gained 70 pounds in a year the year that my mom was sick and passed away and it continued from there and it would go, you know, gain 40, lose 30, gain 20, you know, lose a little bit, but it was like, I would, I would lose. I've probably lost 500 pounds in my life, but I would lose a little bit and gain more 
and lose a little bit and gain more. And I wasn't really dieting. I, I never believed that dieting worked. So I really just didn't even try, but I kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And about five years ago, I was at my highest weight of my entire life and sick and the the pandemic happened and we're all at home and what are we going to do but sit there and eat and watch tv right or eat, eat while we're working at home because we're have the kitchen right there and we're stressed out yeah and so my emotional freedom started started about 10 years ago i started learning emotional freedom technique eft it's also called tapping because you literally tap on your face and at that time, it was an interest, but not, I wasn't consistent with it, but I learned the technique and it did help. So I took the training a couple of years later, um, the full um, training to work with clients. And I had some successes, had some, you know, times where it didn't work great. I mean, it always worked when I did it, but I wasn't always consistent with it. And then three years ago, I was so ill, I could not get out of bed most days and I couldn't work. I had to move in with a family member because I was basically not completely bedridden, but like if I could get from my bed to the chair, that was like a good day. And I knew I had to do something and I knew that I had these techniques and I just hadn't been, I hadn't had the energy to even try with them. And I was so low. I would pray to God every day to not let me wake up in the morning because I just couldn't face another day of pain and exhaustion and just nothing to live for. And I decided that every day he would let me wake up again. And I wasn't happy with that. that. I didn't see that as a blessing. I viewed that as a curse because of all the pain that I was in. And finally, I don't remember what exactly the turning point was, but I realized like, if he's going to make me wake up every day, I have to have a reason to live and I have to be able to live. So I use all of my money that I was making at the time, which was very little. I won't say how little, but very little. I used all of it on sessions, emotional freedom sessions with various practitioners. And I was like, this is the only thing that I am able to do right now to save my life. I didn't have the energy to diet, exercise, walk, nothing. And so I did, I had my sessions. I was working with three different practitioners for a while and I was working, you know, one lady every other week and then, you know, alternating weeks. Sometimes I had three sessions in a week and three years later, I'm doing the best that I have probably ever been emotionally, physically, it's still getting there. It's still a process because I was so incredibly ill for so, so long that that doesn't reverse overnight, but I have a lot more energy. I'm obviously more animated. Um, I wear color now for a long time. The only thing I wore was black or gray and, and I tap every day, even if it's only for five minutes. I tap every single day. And if I don't do it in the morning, I feel funky all day. And I'm like, why do I feel like this? Oh yeah, I didn't do my tapping this morning. And so it, yes, you need intensive sessions if you're in a state like I was, but a few minutes every day makes a big difference. Because what do you do in the morning? You get up, you wash your face, you brush your teeth, even if you're not leaving the house, maybe take a shower. That's every day. That's not, you know, that's not once a month you get, you know, down and dirty with the scrub brush. 
And so that con consistency was what really saved me. So I want to share with you, we're specifically talking about cravings today, but I thought it was important for you to understand like where I was coming from. Um, in my situation, food was the only time I felt anything. I was so emotionally dead that the only time I was capable of feeling in any way was the hit that I would get from eating cake or a Starbucks frappuccino or, you know, I had a whole list of emotional foods, but those are some of them. And so this technique that I'm actually going to be doing a full cravings class, a uh, cravings conquer class workshop tomorrow but I wanna give you a demo of the EFT technique and how easy it is and how quickly it works. So my cravings, when I was really doing really, really poorly, Dr. Pepper was like, I drank that instead of water. I was drinking, I don't even remember, but probably at least four or five cans a day, probably more than that. But I don't really remember because I didn't me, really pay attention. Told, tell me what you told me about if you didn't have it, what was your thinking process? Yeah. So the Dr. Pepper, like I, I needed it. Like I just had to have it. It had to be in the fridge all the time. And my other thing was Cheetos. And more especially like in the last like three, four years, I was living in an area where we didn't have a lot of American products. I was literally living in Ecuador and I couldn't get all of my foods. My suitcases were full of food when I went to Ecuador because I had to have my comfort things, but I found that I could buy Cheetos there. So Cheetos was my like go-to, had to have it, absolutely thought I was going to die if I couldn't get my Cheetos. And they weren't always available. So I would buy like 20 or 30 bags at a time and hoard them. And I would, I would have liked to have eaten them all, you know, and in one sitting, but I had to make them last because I couldn't always get them. And if I couldn't get them, I would have panic attacks, like full scale meltdown. I am going to die because I cannot get my Cheetos. And so I, these were two of my strongest emotional ties. I have others, but those were my two biggest ones. And I have done this cravings technique on both of those at different times. And I was like, I still can hardly believe I have not had a Dr. Pepper in probably two or three years and I did the technique five years ago and I've had a Dr. Pepper a couple times since then because I'm like oh that maybe that sounds good and then I drink it and I'm like hmm no nah, that's not that good I don't want it anymore four or five a day to <laughs> a couple in like years and the Cheetos, I just did this technique specifically on the Cheetos last year. No, the year before, because I was like, I can't always get them. And I'm, I can't let myself be in a panic state every time I can't get them. So I did the technique oh, on this. Yeah, thinking you're going to die. Yeah. Yeah. And I, someone else in my family bought them last year. And I was like, oh, Cheetos. I want Cheetos. And I opened the bag and I had a couple and I was like, oh. Hmm. Wait, that doesn't taste like it's supposed to. Uh -huh. And I thought I had gotten a rancid one because uh -huh. it didn't taste right. And uh -huh. so I was like, well, I'll just eat a few more. And I did. And I was like, huh, no, this doesn't taste like it's supposed to. And I did finish the bag. It was like, you know, the little tiny personal size bag. But I was like, that didn't taste good. I don't think I want that anymore, like ever again. And I haven't. That's the only time I've had them since. And I was like, yuck. I'm so, telling 
I mean, raise your hand privately or personally, you know, or publicly. But if you've ever felt like in a panic, if you couldn't have your craving food or you hoarded yeah. it or you thought you were going to die without it. I mean, who hasn't been there? And who hasn't done a midnight run to the 24 hour Walmart to get ice cream or cookies or chips? Because uh, you're yeah. so stressed out and you're like, who ate the last one? I have to have it. <laughs> You know, I think we've all done that. Be honest. <laughs> Be honest. Publicly or. <laughs> or just with yourself. Like, oh, or yeah. Just to that. yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. we, we, you know what? Yeah. We, yeah. We, we get, I get you. We, most, we get you. We get you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the actual tapping for cravings is kind of a long process. It's one session, but it's a very specific process. So I'm not exactly going to demo that today. That'll be in the workshop tomorrow. But I want to show you tapping and how simple it is. So basically, we're just going to be tapping literally on our the acupressure points on our face and upper body. So the first one is at the base of your eyebrow. And then are, around these are acupressure points for people who don't know this. These are like acupuncture points. Okay. Yes. Yep. So if you go, you'll sometimes get needles in your face. They don't always do that, but these are those acupressure points. So the second one is around the side of the eye. So just follow your eyebrow down and you're tapping on the bone on the side of the eye. Don't worry. No needles will be used in the yeah. session. Just your no own picture. <laughs> And then under the eye, again, they're on the bone. And I just do a couple fingers so you know you're getting the spot. And you're tapping lightly. You're not like pounding. It's just like when you're da -da 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 on the desk, tapping under the nose. And this is stimulating your nervous system, right, Kate? Yes. So this is calming down the amygdala calming the, the sympathetic nervous system and activating your parasympathetic nervous system. So on the chin, on that crease. Oh, it's and calming. then, it a lot. Uh, yeah. And on your collarbone, and I just tap with my whole hand so I know I'm getting the point. And the last point is a little bit awkward, but it's under your arm where your bra strap goes, your bra line. And you can reach around and tap with your other hand, or I just do it with my fist. That's more comfortable for me. So that's, that's one round of tapping. And then you finish with the top of your head, like where the baby soft spot is. And you just kind of just tap on your head. So that's a simple round of tapping. So now let's do a quick exercise. I want everyone to close their eyes if you can do so safely and just take a deep breath in. Hold it. Now in through your nose and out through your mouth. Big and on long a, exhale. A long exhale. And on a scale of one to 10, how deep was that breath? So one is completely shallow and 10 is like yoga master deep breath. So just picture that number in your mind. How deep was that breath that you took? And we're gonna do a round of tapping. This restricted breathing. This restricted breathing. Restricted breathing. Restricted breathing. This restricted breathing. Restricted breathing. Restricted breathing. And deep breath in. And out. Now take another deep breath in. And out. Now take notice after one round of tapping, has your number changed? How deep is your breath now? Mine went up a couple points. 
<clears throat> so that's only ribbed up here. And this time my shirt is my I my whole rib cage went out. Yeah, you're breathing from your diaphragm like you're supposed to. Yeah, and I feel like mine went from like a six to an eight. So that's actually a 20% increase in what, one minute that we did yeah. the tapping? It takes about a minute to do a round of tapping. So you literally saw a 20% change, improvement in a minute. Roxy also 20%, four to six, yeah. she went up. So that's a super simple exercise just to show you that the tapping works. And the tapping works because you're acknowledging the problem, allowing yourself to feel it, and then you're tapping and allowing your body to release what is no longer, what it no longer needs to hold on to. So that's every emotion, any physical feeling in your body, like tightness, pain, you can just tap until that tightness or pain goes away. But for cravings, that's a very specific thing. So our cravings thing tomorrow is going to demonstrate we're just we're going to clear a craving. You're gonna come, pick one thing that's your absolute main craving. It's not sugar, carbs, it's not something broad. It has to be specific. It has like, to be like, like probably even brand specific. Like Kate's like isn't pop. Thing. It was Dr. Pepper. It's, it's not Dr. gum. Pepper. It's what brand, what flavor. And yeah, so if you come, I'm you're all invited. Um, and I'm doing a special price for Amy's friends and guests. My price is normally $40 to do this uh, group exercise, and I'm offering it to you all for 20 to come and be your main craving. What is your kryptonite? Um, so Cheetos was mine. Dr. Pepper was mine. You might have something specific like chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, but whatever your kryptonite is, I want you to buy it and bring it to the session tomorrow. I know that sounds, um, yeah, it sounds like you wouldn't want to do that because we're like, no, keep it out of the house. But you have to, you have to bring it with you. Okay. You you will be eating it during the process. And I would encourage you don't buy a whole package of Snickers. Buy one. You know, buy a, a small portion of ice cream, not a gallon. Because you don't want to, you know, have it, it yeah, with you. You're probably not going to eat it all. So what? You yeah, you're not going to eat it all. You have the food specific craving thing. And then you go through and you will guide. And I will guide you through the process to release that craving. With, with the thing. You show up with the thing. And if it's ice cream, you obviously leave it in the freezer, your drink or whatever. Leave it in the fridge. You want it to be cold. You know, you want it to be exactly the way that you like it best. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow I'll do an introduction, an explanation, and then I'll say, go and get your food. And, you know, if it's in the fridge, then, you know, go and get it. If you want something hot, heat it up to where it's exactly correct. And then we'll do the procedure. Okay. Okay. And then, so you would, um, so then what, what this is going to do is it reprograms like your nervous system that it doesn't need. Yeah, to it, exactly. It reprograms your nervous system to safety. Safety will be your new set point. Okay. You don't need the food to feel comfortable and safe. So your brain is convinced that it is not safe unless you have the thing exactly okay and it, that you might not it you don't feel safe or you feel connected you crave specific things because of a specific emotional connection okay so you don't it's, feel loved you don't feel connected you don't feel hurt and it's even more specific than that so 
emotional eating is actually a separate thing. It's, I feel sad, I need to eat. I feel bored, I need to eat. I feel angry, I need to eat. That's actually a separate thing. Mm -hmm. So cravings are very specific foods tied to very specific memories. So a true craving is I need, for example, coffee ice cream because my mom and I used to go out and have coffee ice cream together. Okay. So it's related to a memory and a person. So I want you to be thinking about that. What is your kryptonite food? What is the memory it's connected to and the person? So if it's a group thing, like you would go to your grandma's house for Thanksgiving and she would make her pumpkin pie and that's your favorite thing in the whole world. It's a group thing, but the memory is tied to your grandma. The food is tied to your memory of that time with your grandma. But just so because you have a favorite food does that make it a craving it does not so a favorite food you can enjoy any time a craving is i need this specific thing right now you can enjoy something and it not necessarily be a craving a craving is i need this mm -hmm. And you think, you don't necessarily know that you think this, but I need it in order to be happy or I need it in order to feel safe. And you don't know you're thinking that. You just you don't know you're thinking that. that. And your you body think, feels it. I need that ice cream right now. Yeah, that's what your body and, feels. And nothing and else will you. do. And then and emotional eating confused. is like, I just need to eat and anything will do. Right, it's a craving yeah. is I have to have Starbucks coffee ice cream or I will die. Like I need that specific thing. Okay. Okay. And so that's the difference. Part of the difference between a craving and emotional eating. People often interchange them and they're actually very different. And then there's the trauma eating or the, there's other categories. There's, there's other categories of emotional eating, but craving specifically is I need this specific food. Okay. It might be, I need tortillas and cheese. It might be, I need chips and dip. It might be, okay. you know, Mountain Dew. It might be. Okay. So whatever they you feel know, the need for. Whatever and, you feel the need for. What is the difference between, the, just quickly, um, I know you have to go, but the, the other categories of emotional eating is kind of a, an umbrella, right? So cravings is one thing. And then what's the other? There, yeah, are, different from addiction, there are actually craving. a lot of different categories okay. of emotional eating. Okay. But broadly speaking emotional eating is i feel a certain way so that so i need to eat and it's not food specific it's i feel really sad i need i need to eat i'm lonely i need to eat and you and that is when you pick up something that's in the, the pantry maybe it's you know, chips or maybe can be you don't whatever. have anything bad in your pantry and you're digging around and you find some old chocolate chips and you're just like, okay, I don't have chocolate chip cookies, but you're just, and you mow down a whole bag without even noticing that you're doing it. That's not a craving, that's emotional eating. And that's when you're like, stuff, 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 stuff. Okay. Yeah, it, the craving is very specific and urgent. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So think about your craving food, your kryptonite craving, and what emotion is tied to that and what memory and a, a specific person. Okay. And so tomorrow we will be doing the class. What time did I say, Carrie? Noon? 
or 12 30. Yeah. Uh, you did say noon, noon tomorrow. So if anyone is interested, I had a Google form, but it wasn't working. So let Carrie or Amy know that you want to come. We'll get you and on the we'll list. make sure that you get the link for tomorrow. Oh, I looked out. It didn't work. It didn't work. Oh. I'll have but to we'll fix get, it we'll, later. Right after the session, we'll just, we'll just fix it. And, but we'll, we'll get it. your list, whoever wants, and then we'll send you the yeah. sign up sheet. We'll make sure you get the invitation. Not okay. a problem. All right. And that's going to be $20. $20. Yeah. Okay. And how, before, or after? Um, uh, I will need to see how it works, but I'm trying to make it before, but it was tied to the form. So we'll see if it's okay. If it'll work. And how long will this last? And will it work in one session? And like you said, I did a session two years ago and you're still having effect with the Doritos. I have never done another session on either Cheetos or Dr. Pepper. So a craving will be gone in one session. Really? One and craving. One craving, session. one session. If you have other cravings, those need their own session. It's not a one and done for all cravings, but you will never need to do this specific craving ever again. Interesting. Yeah, so very specific. Kim is asking, is it live or virtual? Well, it will be live just like right now, It'll be on but Zoom. not in person. It will be on Zoom. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be on Zoom tomorrow. Did one session of this thing on the Cheetos, literally, like, seriously? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's that specific, but it's that yeah. effective. And the, it's Dr. Amazing. Pepper, the Dr. Pepper, now that is big. One session. I, mm -hmm. I know some serious Mountain Dew addicts out there, and I'm telling you, I think yeah. they pay a million dollars, not 20. Yes, it's normally a lot more expensive, but I'm doing twenty dollars for for Amy's group. Oh my goodness gracious! So, so. Mm -hmm. I gotta I gotta figure I gotta reach out to my my do my de devil in the do folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we'll see you all tomorrow. Thanks okay, for having thanks. me. Thank you. That thank was you, amazing, thank Kate. You. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't even imagine, honestly. I, I can't even imagine that that like yeah. like yeah. One, it's amazing and Kate's one. been taking some extra training recently on the classes and everything so it will be like this ex explanation she'll walk you through step by step tomorrow during the yeah, session and, so, and e yeah EFT is it, it, it's, it's not uh, difficult it's just that specific very specific so that's why you need someone to guide you through it well, that makes perfect sense. And I have not done this, y'all, but I will show up. I'm going to, I have developed a need for this like crazy um, since my trip down to Ecuador to see the girls, uh, ironically enough. Um, well, there's so, your memory and your person. Yeah, yep, that's exactly Very specific. it. So I'll, be, I'll be bringing this and it's not good for my teeth and my jaw and, and, and my pocketbook. Do you know how expensive gum is now? Have you tried to, I mean... Seriously? It's ridiculous. Yeah, and so you can't logical ration away a craving. You can't. No, that, no, that's yeah, the thing. So. That's exactly it. Okay, okay, that's exactly it. Have you ever tried to rationalize, intellectualize, um, tried, but tried, <laughs> strategize uh, what, uh, away a craving? Have you? Yeah, uh, it, you, you can't because it's, it's emotional. Yeah. You can't use logic on it. Well, and here's an interesting thing too, from Kate's last class that uh, they were getting so specific on this. And I'm like, well, don't put a picture that has like, you know, fruit on it. And she's like, you can actually have a craving for a healthy thing. She says one of the ladies in the class had a craving for apples, but she would eat like nine of them, you know, <laughs> like half. and that's, that's where it's, it's the craving, you know, it was emotional. And then afterwards, she she doesn't crave them anymore. She could eat normally, so it doesn't, but yeah. didn't have that attack, crave, need. Yeah, because the emotion and and the emotion and the memory, you don't erase the emotion and you don't erase the memory. You process it. You make the you disconnect them. Well, yeah, and so it's there. It's you process it, mm -hmm. right. and that's what most of us haven't done. So anyway, she's gonna 
Wait. Oh, so, thanks, Roxy. Yeah, a couple had to leave for Roxy, other appointments, so but know, thanks for coming. You know what I and this learned? Little, and this little bit will be on the recording here that we can share with those who couldn't make it. So Yeah, 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 yeah. And Deb, I don't know if you can speak to a craving. Do you have a specific craving? Or Kim, um, anyone that's on, Martha, anyone, Jane, a specific, like, the thing that's the kryptonite? Do you guys have, do you have one, Carrie? Go ahead, Deb. You know, I'm sitting here trying to figure out because I was pretty sure I craved jelly beans. But I have no memory that I can come up with that relates to jelly beans. And, 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 and maybe like you don't remember it now, but that's okay. But the emotion is there. Maybe the emotion is the memory. It's un it's underneath. Yeah. But maybe, it will get but I didn't yeah, I didn't feel like I would die. I yeah. don't feel like I have to run out and buy them, but if they're in front of me, I will eat every one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's yeah, probably not a craving. But maybe uh, more emotional eating, right? Yes. Yes. I don't know. We'll have to ask Kate. I mean, she <laughs> went on and on the other day about this stuff and I was swimming in it. I was like, what? This is crazy, you know. Yeah, sorry. She just she literally has another session right now. So that's why she had to go. Yeah. But I was taking it. Mean, she was taking me to all kinds of new places, which I was really because I know yeah. I've always been an emotional eater, but I've never really understood the depth of it of the you know of that. Um, and Dr. Anderson's work when we talk about the emotional freedom, you know, tech, you know, when he's talking about stop, challenge, and choose, process it, feel the emotion, let it run through that whole thing. It's brain. It's brain science and. We, what I have learned in the last three years working with my um, PTSD and my anxiety and panic and, and all of that, emotional eating has always been a thing for me. But what you just said, Carrie, is right. It's like our brains take in so much information all the time. And what's the problem is it's not processed or when you say processed properly, the brain is designed to put things in folders and put it away and categorize the thing so that it's not rolling around in your brain causing stress so when but a lot of us are so we're too busy to do something about our emotions oh, i'll get to that later yeah never <laughs> yeah. and we're carrying around stuff from 10 years ago 50 years ago yes and and then and then we really and then it's so piled up and it's like well i never learned how to deal with those things you know, yes. whether it be stress or whatever. And, and so we're, we get it, we get it piling up. But when I was in the class with Kate, like seven years ago, our instructor was one of the grand masters and mentors. And she's like, well, actually cravings are one of the easiest things to deal with because they're so specific. Because they're specific versus, okay. Anybody have a drawer, a closet or a room that's full of crap. You guys have a drawer? Yeah, I'm a hoarder. A junk of drawer, food. okay. And food. So this is my analogy now. Imagine that is in your brain. Yeah, okay. clutter. So, so all of those emotional things that have happened to you, and they happen like rapid fire, right? That you haven't got organized in a drawer, in its spot, on the hanger, you know, in the place, right? You haven't got it organized. Imagine that. In your brain, it's all just clutter. Yeah. Well, that's why you got to shut your phone off every once in a while. Your phone is doing funny things. My husband's like, well, when was the last time you turned it off? You know, it, it sorts things and it reboots yeah. and it's all organized and it, oh, it doesn't glitch anymore. <laughs> right, right. Which our makes, brain is like glitching. <laughs> our, brain, our brain is glitching. And what makes sense that the craving thing is the easiest, which is funny because it's you think it's the hardest thing ever. It's the most like, intense. Like there's no way on earth I'm going to get rid of this craving for Cheetos because I'm going to die. Like there's no way. But the, it makes sense now because it's one thing. You, If Betty were on, she'd be saying it's one thing. She can put it in its place and it's done. And that makes perfect sense. When you get organized, you put the things in the place. And I love, I love this. It's just like, oh, 
it's so it's not rocket science. It really isn't. So it really makes it makes a lot of sense if you could take one that kryptonite food and really kind of put it in its its place. Yeah. And you and you might be thinking, well, if one session is for one craving, well, I have a whole bunch of cravings and this is going to cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars to get through each one. But it's also a self-help technique. So you Once you know how to do it, like I said, I'm a hoarder. Well, that's not true. I'm actually a neat, clean, organized person, but I tend to put things off that are my own to take care of other people because I've gone to bed. <laughs> there you go. But I'm working on these things. Yeah, there I need to. Go. I need to be as active at it as she is. She's been making leaps and bounds of progress. Yeah, she has been making leaps and bounds. It's oh, just it, yeah, like like crazy. I about died, you guys, because I've known her for a long time. And I about died when she told me she hadn't had Cheetos and Dr. Pepper. I was like, oh, what? what? Who are yeah, you? How did that happen? Yeah. How, how did yeah, this from happen? five a day to five years and meh. <laughs> Literally, I'm like, tell me more. What are you doing? Because we need to help people. I got to share your story when she started telling me. I was like, oh, okay, hold the phone. We got to do, we got to tell people. Um, it, it, because really, how can you ever stay on plan if you don't deal with some of this stuff that just continues? With kryptonite laying around. Trips you up all, yeah, with kryptonite laying around all the time. I mean, even if you, okay, okay. Even if you avoid it, right? You strategize around it. You micromanage it. You plan around it. You you know muscle arm it what, what were the other things i mean there's so many ways you can try to strategize intellectualize even i've even tried to spiritualize my habits away with scriptures i yeah. mean truly they don't work either because <laughs> i mean it, it all helps it all helps, it helps. so i find you know we like, pray well, for holy spirit we pray for the power i can't but then that. In the I moment, can't say that it doesn't work. Yeah, but, but but getting to the root of what this issue is, yeah. like like the dandelions, you know, you gotta get to the root. You can mow them down, you can mow them right. down, and your yard looks great. Yeah, but you really do have to get to the root issue, and it's not that difficult if you pull it out before the roots are too big. And so any and and Kate, it can do sessions I later in analogy. for for some of the other issues one on one, like, and that's what she was saying for certain things addictions and whatever you will want a one-on-one -on -one session but the craving thing can be done in a group yeah it's that's not what's fun. beautiful about this so that's why she wanted to present this to everybody mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that's fascinating that's fascinating because even if you pray some of this stuff away god you know even if you're a praying person help me with self-control take this away from me right even god like I, how many times you have to pray about the, you know, emotional eating? He's not coming down to help me. We gotta get this organized. Yeah. Well, that goes back to willpower versus skill power, you know, which is great. That's exactly it. But when it's a craving, it's emotional. There's no such thing as willpower. So the skill, the skill will be learning this process, mm -hmm. learning this process. And she showed the tapping. It's simple. You just. Come to the class and follow along. You'll there'll be Q and A time, you know, so you understand the procedure. And technically, you will be able to do this on your own as well. On your own, yeah, with your own. You know, and she and she worked with a practitioner for the first few things, mm -hmm. but now she knows how to do it on her own. You know, on herself. Mm -hmm. And then the deeper, the deeper things, um, like me, I've had someone I work with for, you know, sure. individually and privately with some of, some of the things I've had, but now I have my own, um, practice at home when I, you know, taught my homework, you know, that I do on my own. Um, and I have learned that it isn't willpower guys, because willpower and knowledge does only gets us so far. And then we, if we're still stuck, I've talked to three or four people today who are besides themselves stuck. They know all the skills, they practice the things, they do what they're supposed to do. They know what they're doing. It's not a lack of knowledge or even doing, even like I'm doing the plan exactly. I'm exercising like exactly. I'm and nothing, nothing, nothing is changing with their weight. And, 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 um, and the whole this is week. just the next thing in the equation. If you're finding you're frequently stuck, yeah. and, and in fact, um, this latest class she took, most people, I mean, 
I would say all, but I wasn't there in the class. If you're getting stuck, it's because you haven't worked on the emotional element. You exactly. can, you can exercise all you want, diet, collect, you know, quote unquote, yeah. all you want. And you might get to a point, but if someone says something to you about your body, oh, you're so fat, oh, you're too skinny, you know, boom, you're gonna go back to the safe weight that you were mm -hmm. it because it's an emotional issue mm -hmm. it's safe for that. And, and that's the bigger thing but specifically on cravings as well but on body image addictions emotional eating i mean it's emotional yeah so emotional freedom sometimes we need a guide and that's where kate comes in she's amazing yeah emotional freedom and the identity has to match on the outside the inside and it all it all has to be integrated and organized well, and if you think of it it's it's what you're just saying and amy michelle is the dieting and the exercise is physical that's the outside yeah outer physical and then later on you can do the emotional work that works or you can do the emotional work first and then and you see if you didn't make faster progress with the dieting and the exercise. But a lot of people just skip the emotional component. And now with the, the medical weight loss, you know, they want to skip the diet and the exercise too. You know, just give me the pill because we don't have time. And the, the whole society, the whole system is designed for, you know, instant gratification and, and nobody wants to do the work, but you know, people like you, Amy, that are doing the work, I'm making the progress. So, yeah, it does go. That and way. and everybody here, I'm not just talking to you. I, everybody's here because you feel this community, this emotional support, and yeah. and you know that's a component. And kudos to Dr. A for you know making that one of the pillars. Yeah. And having your coach. So Kate is a guide for the yeah. emotional. A guide, Thank mentor, you. coach. Yeah. For, for the emotional freedom piece, which, um, which is, yeah, which is really what, what we're doing with the conscious leader forum every, you know, every week and stop challenge and choose and, and Dr. Anderson's identity book after the life book, that's the, the next step, but I can't tell you how many people that have gotten to their goal and had something happen and boom, right. Slid all the way back because it's the emotional component and the inside. There it is. Uh, yeah. Dr. Is, Dr. A is very top down and outside in mm -hmm. and it works and he's the doctor, he's the scientist, but inside doing the inside out. and then out and, and bottom energy levels to the top you know that's that's a real sustainable way of doing things and like kate who was a, her highest level ever 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 she couldn't ever have dieted or exercised her way she couldn't even get from the bed right i about cried when she said she could her good day was getting from the bed to the chair that's a good day well what do you you know what are you going to do? So she had to start with the emotional component and work backwards versus most of us over here working this way. And we're stuck because we're not getting to the emotional piece. So, and willpower isn't a thing. Willpower wears out like a battery. I've said that over and over again, willpower. It's not willpower, it's skill power. You got to get the skills and the skills mean practice, dribble, shoot, dribble, shoot, dribble, shoot, practice, practice, practice. And, and that's and what the tapping will yeah. be for you as well and you know oh, you'll yeah. find whatever technique works best for you like you said you often prefer the havening i do the havening but you're re well. you're regulating your nervous system i mean that's how simple it is you said it's not rocket science it's not it's just regulating your nervous system and we're actually recreating new neural pathways no. the brain cells still grow there's never too many connections the brain makes more new ones and all it's of this ser increases serotonin, dopamine, you know, F all the good and lowers cortisol. Lowers cortisol. Up with the good, down with the bad at the cortisol same time. Is that fat storage hormone that we do not. Yeah, there's loads of scientific research behind oh. it, and mm -hmm. and so yeah. thank you for loving yourself enough to be here, everybody. You know, yeah, that's no really question. what it's about. No question. No question. And Thanks, yeah, Martha. 
you may not understand this tapping thing, guys, but just know it's all about Chinese acupuncture points and it's all been around for thousands of years. Nothing really funky about it. It's well, just, the, really the thing that blows me away is that it's already there in our body. It's just now scientists are calling it something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, we didn't know about sympathetic and parasympathetic when we were little kids, but it existed. It's just yeah. now there's a name for it. You know, yeah. once you got to that part in your science textbook or, yeah. you yeah. know, they, they've only named it how many, you know, decades or hundred years ago, but it's been there all along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're just working with what we already got. <laughs> the tools are already there. Yeah, absolutely. They've, they're God-given tools. We just need to learn how to use them. So I don't know what, Deb, you got out of this. Elaine, if that's you on the phone. Jane, did you guys learn anything today or get anything out of this? What what a, a new level of thinking about your where you are? I know, Jane, you've been up and down and around in circles. How about you, Deb? Oh, I liked the example of the tapping because, well, just with the order Mm -hmm. I've never gotten that before and the breathing, how that. Yeah. Reflects. And that, and that was so that you could see and feel the effect in your body yeah. just in one minute. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it good. Works. and Jane. Oh, I'm, I'm familiar with the EFT process. I hadn't thought about using it for cravings. And I can't particularly think of any specific craving. Um, I have, I do emotional eating, that's for sure. But I'm pondering which, what to use for emotional craving. Okay, well, well if, if you find yourself even today or, you know, tonight, like, oh, yeah, I when I'm feeling, I go to this, you know. Go ahead and bring right. that item and come to the class because you will benefit. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I don't doubt that. I think it's yeah. very beneficial. Yeah, I think whatever your go-to thing is, is just start there. Because And that's interesting. You knew about EFT. Have you done it yourself or just looked into it, Jane? I have done it. Yeah. I And bought a couple books on it. <laughs> Yeah, that's what my sister and I are. But not are, for food. I haven't thought about yeah, it. Yeah, and food. we've gone for a certification already on levels <laughs> one and two of that. And she's gone beyond that with lots of extra training. So, yeah, it, but it's the emotional component is the key. So you see the benefit uh, of that. Well, I can't join in tomorrow because I have plans already, but... I hope okay. that those of you who go can report back to us. Yeah, for, for sure. sure. Uh -huh. And we'll be doing it again in the future. We'll just, we're just getting going with yeah. a regular schedule. Yeah, I think, I think probably once a month. And it just fit this week. I mean, there wasn't a Monday thing. And yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I did send out some um, emotional eating video today and I do have some other goodies. If you really struggle with it, I've got, I've got some other goodies that I can send out to you that are just just to, you know, give you something to a touchstone for the week because there wasn't a topic, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think this is big for everybody. <laughs> and, and I uh, just want to take a quick minute here at the end yes. for the group and whoever's on the recording, because we all here in the group have two friends that lost their moms yesterday. Yes. Everybody knows Sandy's mom passed away. And I don't know how many of you remember Carissa, She's only been on a few times, but she's still, you know, with us without the Via group. Uh, her mom passed away last night. So, oh, yeah. <sighs> heavy side, big hugs. And my mom made it out of ER, and that was good. Woo, what a day was that. And that was our, you know, it turned out okay. But um, but we all have, a, life just keeps coming at us. And if we don't yeah. file it properly, it's going to show up and make us do things we don't want to do. Yeah. yeah. So, so I just wanted to say, even on the recording, even if you're not here right now, or you couldn't be, or whatever reason, you are loved and missed. Loved, missed, and appreciated, and and we're we're happy to have uh, we're happy to have this group. So thank you very much. Keep stay tuned for um, the end of the month is uh, Mindset May. Three inspirational quotes today. So and three gratitudes from yesterday. If you didn't, you know, keep up with the uh, with the um, 
Mindset May, the obviously only two more days. Yeah, those are great. I've been loving that Sharon's been sticking them in the group because I sometimes forget to go over to I know the the Facebook to look at them. Tracy and Mary, the mom daughter duo who made the cupcakes, they followed my lead and made the cupcakes this the shake cakes this weekend. Yay! And they put Good. it, they posted it in Optimal Life. So congratulations to you guys. And then drop it like it drop it like it's hot Monday. Pick one thing. Let's do a two week streak for a 14 day or 15 day challenge starting Monday, June 3rd. Yeah. And we'll do and that's for everybody. You don't have to be on program. You no. just like, are you going to drink water? Are you going to do, you know, one healthy habit? Yep. Two week streak. Drop it like top. Boom. Okay. Yeah. All right. Share that with everybody. Share that with your friends. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Gina. Bye.